Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. I pray that you guys had a great and awesome weekend. Listen, before we get into our meal, before we dig in, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do not forget to click that subscribe button. And after you click the subscribe button, you only have one more job to do, and that is to click the bell and it will notify you every time we upload a video. If this message or this meal has been a blessing to you, please do not forget to like the video, but also share the video um, on your social media platforms. Um, you can copy and paste the link in your text messaging if you want to text message a friend, um, because that way, for one, it will encourage somebody else like it encouraged you, but also it will help with the YouTube algorithm and cause them to share it with more people on their platform instead of all this negativity and, you know, all of this craziness that we see constantly when we are on these types of platforms. So yeah, I just wanted to just share that with you. Also, we're thinking about uh, doing a text messaging service only to notify you guys when we upload a video, because unfortunately, even though I have the amount of subscribers that I have, and this happens pretty much with every YouTuber, everybody that does videos on YouTube, unfortunately, YouTube is not letting everybody know when a new video is uploaded. So it'd be used for that purpose. It wouldn't be used for any type of spam or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we'll be letting you guys know about that. Just praying on it. I need to look into it, but it'll just be a text messaging service where you can just subscribe to. And every time we upload a video, you will receive a text. So listen, man, I pray that you guys, um, once again are doing well. I don't want to keep talking over the food. It has been prepared. It smells great. It is on the table. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Now, today I want to talk about something um, that everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice, I'm sure, has experienced. And before we get into what that is, I wanted to uh, talk about this topic, and I wanted to come from the book of Job. Um, and if any of you guys have been saved long enough, or maybe you're not saved, but you've been, you know, uh, to church a bunch of times in your life or a few times, um, or, you know, just watching TV or just hearing people in conversation, you probably heard something about the story of Job. But just to give you a little background, you know, the Bible says that Job was a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was so blessed that the Bible says he was the greatest of all the men of the East and where I want to take, um, you know, my thought from, or where I want to start off, I should say my starting point. I want to start at Job chapter one. If you have your Bible, please follow along with us. Job chapter one. Uh, and we're going to be reading verses six through 12 and they read as follow. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, when comest thou? In other words, God said, where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does God, I mean, does Job, excuse me, fear God for naught? So this is what Satan says. Does Job fear you for nothing? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? And I want to stop right there because that should be an encouragement to us. Because when we belong to God, when we are those that fear God, in other words, reverence God, and we eschew evil, we don't want to have anything to do with it. You know, that's when we know uh, 
that God has a protection around us. We need to thank God for the hedge that he has placed around us and placed around our houses and placed on every side. But when we are abiding in him, when we remain in him, when we are one with him, this is the types of things that God has done for the for us. This is the type of hedge that God has around us as well. This isn't just for Job, but th- for those of us that are saved, We have this same type of hedge, but it says, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. I love that. Thou has blessed the work of his hands because we just was talking about last week about diligence and about how important it is for us to put our hands to something that we have to work. We can't allow preachers and people to tell us, oh, just come up and give this and God is just going to do everything else. No, we have to put our hands to something and God will bless it. Verse 11 says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he have. Don't miss this. This is going to be very important. Satan says, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So we see that Satan can't do anything that God does not allow him to do. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And what's so crazy about this story is because now here comes a day where three different messengers came to Job with bad news on a particular day. Three different messengers came to Job with bad news back to back to back to back. Matter of fact, it was four messengers. Now that I think about it, four different messengers came to Job with bad news all in the same day. Um, The first said his oxen had been stolen and his servants that were with them had been killed. Uh, Then the other one comes and says the fire guy has fallen from heaven and have burnt up his sheep and servants. Uh, Another one comes and says his camels have been stolen and the servants that was with them had been killed. And then the fourth came and said his sons and daughters were killed while they were at the eldest brother's house drinking wine. And that if if we want to talk about tragedy back to back to back to back, to hear all of those things all in one day. And the Bible says that each messenger came while the other one was just finishing up. So he hadn't even processed, you know, the bad news before the next bad news was coming well before he got hit with what he got hit with. So, I mean, you know, (laughs) it would be, uh, silly to even say that this was a bad day. This was a a horrendous day. This was a horrible day. This goes beyond a bad day. You know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, we won't find many that have seen tragedy all at one time, all in one day, the way that Job did. But the Bible goes on to say in Job chapter one, verses 20 through 22, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. And that's very powerful because it teaches us that even though we're going to receive bad news in this life, even though every day is not going to be a good day, things are going to hit us unexpectedly. The thing that we have to learn how to continue to do and to do in that moment is to worship God, is to go before God because God is our strength. He is our refuge. But verse 21 goes on to say, and said, this is what Job said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. Very powerful. Because one thing we have to understand about this life is that we truly don't own anything and we can't control anything. Everything we have is by the grace and the blessings of God. So that's something that we should all keep in mind that the money, the children, all of those things was a blessing from God. We don't own anything. When we leave here, we are going to leave here naked. When we leave here, like my pastor always says, you know, if nobody don't put any clothes on you, you're going to leave here naked. You'll be laying in that casket naked, you know? So he says, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of of the Lord. And Job verse, uh, excuse me, chapter two, verses one through 10. And this is where we're going to, we're going to 
pull our subject from. It says, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And if you've ever read the book of Peter, you know, Satan didn't say exactly what he was doing. Only thing he said, I'm just walking to and you know, to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. But when you read the book of Peter, Peter tells us what that means. He because he had an experience with Satan. He went through something when he had backslid, when he had walked away from the Lord and the Lord had to go back and get him. Remember, said that he says that Satan walks to and fro looking for whom he may devour. And we know that this is what is happening here because look what God says to him in the next verse. Even though he didn't explain to God what he was exactly doing, God already knows. Listen to what God says. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? Why is he asking him that? Because he is looking for something someone to devour. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and the shoe of evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So God says, even though he went through all of this, all of this calamity, all of this bad news, he's still holding on to his integrity. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yeah, all that a man have will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. He can't do what he want to do unless God allows him. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took a pot shirt to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. And this is where we're going to pull our topic from verses nine and 10. Then said his wife, this, this is, this is his boo. This is the, the one he lays in the bed with every night. No telling how long they have been married. Then said his wife unto him, does thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. And today I wanted to deal with negativity because anytime we are confronted with negativity in our life, anytime negativity is brought to us, especially from another person, most of the time, if not all of the time, it is coming to tell us to give up, whether that's give up on God, whether that's give up on our marriage, whether that's give up on family, whether that's give up on a career, whether that's give up on a business, whether that's give up on ministry. It is always coming to tell us to give up. We always know somebody that when we start or go forth in something, they say, well, I know so-and-so that did that and it didn't work out for them. And we need to tell them just like Job did. We need to shut negativity down. Listen, I don't mean no harm. Matter of fact, we don't even have to address it. We hear what they got to say, but we don't receive it. We don't take that into our spirit. Yes, it may not have happened for them, but I am trusting God. He has moved me to go forward. I am going forward and I'm going to let the chips fall where they may, but I'm not going to not do what I am meant to do or not go forward in what I was getting ready to go forward in all because you have a negative word for me. And I wanted to address this because a lot of times we allow people to cause us from going forth and doing things because, you know, maybe they never seen somebody else do it. Maybe it seems impossible to them, but the people that they look up to and that they see doing what they consider to be great. Guess what? Those things seemed impossible uh, to the people that was around them as well. So that's why we can't listen to negativity. And I love what Job did here because he shut it down. And that's what I'm telling you today, because negativity wants you to give up, but you have to shut 
it down. And a lot of times it is coming from Satan, especially when it has to do with things of God and with ministry. And this is how we know we're not calling his wife the devil, but this is how we know that she was being used by the devil. Listen to what verse nine says. And remember, I told you to remember something earlier on in our meal. Verse nine says, then said his wife unto him, and there's two things that it was another thing I should have told you guys to remember. And I'm going to show you what that what that was. It says, then said his wife unto him, does thou still retain thine integrity? Let's deal with that first. If you remember, if we go back to verse three in the conversation between Satan and God, God says to, to Satan, he says, has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fear of God and the shoe of evil? Listen to what God says to him. And still he holdest fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So God said to the devil, one of the main things he pointed out to Satan, he said he hold his fast, his integrity. Job's wife wasn't there when this conversation was happening. Job wasn't there. It was Satan and it was God. So this was something God highlighted. And here we see coming out of her mouth, she's saying, does thou still retain thine integrity? Second thing, she says, curse God and die. If we remember from both conversations that Satan had with God, he says that if you do such and such, he will curse thee to thy face. So she almost verbatim said the same thing that Satan said. And even in the midst of Satan and God's conversation, she said something that, you know, came out of their dialogue. So we see here that Satan was absolutely using her. We're not calling her the devil, not saying that, you know, because we know that she goes on. If you read, you know, through the book of Job, they end up being blessed in the end. His wife is still there with him. But, you know, just like any of us, you know, we can be used by Satan if we are not careful. But guess what? He shut it down. And that's what I'm telling you guys today to do. Don't let anybody talk against your salvation. Don't let anybody talk against your purpose. Don't let anybody talk against your ministry. Don't let anybody talk against your plans for your family, your plans for your marriage. Don't let any negativity seep into your circle. You have to shut it down. And look, Job was, a, he was really aggressive because, and, and I get it here because she told him you, you need to curse God and not only curse God and die. He was like, man, you talking crazy, you talking foolish. And that's a beautiful thing because sometimes we have to address things in that way. We don't have to be disrespectful. We don't have to cuss folk out, but we have to sometimes say, listen, you are bugging and I don't receive that. And I'm going to go forward and trust God. I can't go by what you've seen in the past. I can't go by what what happened to you? I don't know why that happened to you, but this is what God has shown me. I need to go forth and I need to get the job done. So I wanted to encourage you guys. Listen, we're not accepting negativity. We don't receive negativity. We're not giving up. We are going to keep flowing with God until the end. I pray guys that this meal was a nourishment to you. I pray that it encouraged somebody. Listen, go back and read the story of Job. It is very encouraging and it is very eye opening. And it shows us a lot about ourselves because that's what ended up happening with Job in the end. It showed him himself, even though he was an upright man, you know, one that feared God in the shoot of evil, it still showed him some things that was in him that he may not have known. So listen, read that story. I pray that you guys was blessed. I, I'm, I'm so appreciative every time you guys sit down and have a meal with me. So until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.